I hope that Senator McCain is going to look long and hard at this, that his family and his advisors are going to look at this, and they're going to advise him to step away as quickly as possible so that the business of the country and the business of Arizona being represented at the federal level can move forward. If you think it was some Democrat taking some cheap shot at the sitting senator after a cancer diagnosis, think again. That beauty there was Kelly Ward. Uh, she ran against McCain in the Arizona Republican Senate primaries last year and lost. Now she's running against Senator Jeff Flake, also fellow Republican, of course. But what she said about McCain, well, if we call it insensitive, I think that's being overly polite. By the way, Jeff Flake, um, he is a frequent White House critic, Ward, a conservative looking to unseat him. She was also recently at the White House to meet with some of Trump's own advisors about the race. Trump's advisor also targeting Nevada Senator Dean Heller, another fellow Republican. That after Heller said he was solid no vote when it came to health care, a Trump-aligned super PAC immediately started attacking Mr. Heller. Now, here is the president with his idea of a joke at Heller's expense. Sounds more like a threat, but you take a listen. You didn't go out there. This was the one we were worried about. You weren't there, but you're going to be. You're going to be there. <laughs> Look, he wants to remain a senator, doesn't he? Okay. I saw The Godfather, too. All right. Yesterday, President Trump tweeted this out, of course, quote, It's very sad that Republicans, even some that were carried over the line on my back, do very little to protect their president. So what about the president protecting lawmakers who stuck their neck out to vote for the unpopular health care plan bill? Well, that's the one that he's now calling mean. You don't have to look too far. Just go to the Hudson Valley and ask John Faso about that one. Well, a couple hours ago, the president putting the screws to Senate Republicans. Here he is. So far, Senate Republicans have not done their job in ending the Obamacare nightmare. They now have a chance, however, to hopefully, hopefully fix what has been so badly broken for such a long time, and that is through replacement of a horrible disaster known as Obamacare. Okay, so guys, to, to review the bidding, I know you guys know the House bill that failed the first time to even come up for a vote because they didn't have the votes. Finally, they redo it. Uh, they made it even harsher, put it in. He leans on Republicans that were on the edge, especially in swing districts like John Faso, for example, and says, I need your vote here, John, be there for me. They passed the bill. Narrow margin, it gets through. I think they have a kegger to celebrate. I'm not even joking. Um, and within days, he's going out saying, well, I want the Senate to, uh, to go back to the drawing board on this one because it's too mean. You're now a Republican twisting in the wind here. Trump's calling your version mean to your constituents, and he wants a different version in the Senate. Now, the Senate, we all know, doesn't get the votes together. You got McCain, literally, they're trying to maybe load him in an RV to come back because he says they got to go vote again. But my point is, I don't know what the president wants here when it comes to this legislation. That's because the president doesn't know what he wants when it comes to this legislation. He wants something to get passed so he can claim credit for mm -hmm. it. He hasn't invested in a thing in knowing anything about the legislation, let alone getting behind it to try to do anything, to try to use the most valuable asset a president has, which is the bully pulpit. Yep. You go back in history, if there was a presidential priority, the president got out on the road and he whipped his supporters into shape and he used his celebrity to help get the the bill passed. This president has not done that until today, once the thing is on life support at way, best. I have not he's not doing his job. Say one syllable. Think about everything that he said. He's talked about in political tones. Who's not supporting him, who needs to, what's terrible about the death spiral about Obamacare, which is by the way not perfect. Has he said one syllable, guys, about what's in the proposal? I'm not kidding. I will take money off of any of you guys want to bet oh, me. He has think, not he, read it at all. You haven't all. been paying attention. He's been saying that it's going to be terrific health care, that it'll be the best health care. He that also it'll did be, tell me on the campaign trail that nobody was going to lose it, it'll right? It'll cost Pre less money. Yeah. yeah, no, no, he's not going to deny anybody their health care, according to him, if I can quote him. Uh, you know, it's going to be better than anything that that... that I, of course he hasn't delved into specifics. He doesn't know any specifics. Nobody's asked him about it either, specific policy planks that are on there. But it's not, it's not that dissimilar from what he did as a builder. This is, 
healthcare is the house's building and he's going to stick his name on top uh, if it gets to him in time. Okay. And otherwise he reserves the right to complain about but, it. But Dom, you're now a senator or a congressman. You're a Republican. Some places it doesn't matter how you vote on this thing, okay? Either they didn't opt in for Medicaid plus the expansion um, or you have a really, you know, super safe seat. But a lot of them don't. And there's things called wave elections and the rest. My question is this. Even if you look and say the base loves them, all right? We might even show some pictures in West Virginia where apparently there's 10,000 plus people that are going to wear the red hats and make America great. There you see a picture of it, right? But my point is you got to trust him that he's not going to leave you hanging out on the ledge here. I Listen, people, Harvard, well, Republicans and Democrats, everybody cuts deals, right? Mm -hmm. And you go back on promises, sometimes it's hurtful. <laughs> but in this case, the body's not even cold before he'll flip on somebody in his own party to try and get somebody else in his own party to do something else. I haven't seen it this naked, um, at least this obvious before. My point is, even if he gets the Senate to approve something, the House has to say, okay, in reconciliation, they feel that they've been screwed. If any of us at this table, starting with you, are politicians, and we're in the U.S. Senate, would anybody at this table risk your political future on someone like Donald Trump that, do, that do floats with the wind? Do some not have a choice, though? Do some uh, say, some, in my state, I could be in trouble if I go against him? Well, Heller in, in Vegas, yeah. you know, and perhaps that's why the president <laughs> had him right there. And that joke wasn't funny because if, if you're in, in a tough uh, a race, you, that's the last thing in the world. Where's the discipline? That's the key word. Where's the discipline, Mr. President? These are your pawns in a game of chess. And he just sacrifices well, them at will. Well, it means nothing to him. Let's also spend or a loyalty. and talk about the perverse predicament Republicans are in here. We're talking about getting something over the finish line that nobody likes. No one. Right? I mean, th this, this is underwater. Somehow, somehow, the President of the United States had managed to take an issue that Republicans have yeah. won on since 2010 and turn it into a disadvantage for the party, right? Now, Obamacare's polling above whatever version, the House version, the Senate version. Is, and a huge reason for that is because he has not invested in the presidency in oh, terms I've of promoting a legislation. For me, That's why. I thought the best thing that could have happened, as bad as it all was and all the polling and the bad, once this thing got shot down, stop digging, move on to something else. And I get it, there's the domino. You needed the savings from health care to pay, to do the infrastructure, do the tax plan. That said, there's no way you're going to put a lipstick on this pig and it's going to be all right. Get away from health care for now. Now, he was crude when he said, let it fail here. They'll take the blame when Americans get hurt in the process. But if he shut up and didn't say that and just let it go this way, there would be problems with the exchanges. And then maybe get into it. why he's resurrecting this is just political but malpractice. Richard, and then move on to what? What does anyone think is coming down the legislative pipe? People talk Don't about people tax like reform taxes. or instant. You know how hard know. tax reform would make health care reform look like a, a, a you know, Cub Scout proclamation. Yeah, but you wouldn't have people saying you're trying to kill me. You would just oh. you would just have people saying you're taking my money away from me. Listen, you would have every entrenched every entrenched interest in Washington has some little carve out in the United but States tax code. How, how code. about that, that he can get bipartisan support? The Democrats could not say no to. You're not going to say infrastructure, are you? Yeah, of course That's I am. That's adorable. Re rebuilding bridges and and putting people to work. That's something the Democrats would have to come no, to the table. I would have done that one first. Look, fair, I'm but, just, oh, yeah. Sorry. My no, only no, point right. is moving on sounds good, Richard, but moving on to what? Your problems don't get any easier. But I don't see a pathway to him getting what he needs here. And I think even if he gets what he needs, he's going to lose even more. I think, like, talk about Pyrrhic victory. All right. Now, the Trump White House seems divided here. Um, not just Game of Thrones, but it's even a little bit more pronounced now. you got the D.C. faction and the New York City faction. New York team got a big bump when Anthony Scaramucci, self-titled the Mooch, I'm not making it up, he came in to run communications. And you have a DC insider, Sean Spicer, who was uh, basically shown the curve. Chief of Staff Ryan's Priebus, another DC insider, but he's becoming fast the invisible man. Ivanka, husband Jared, clearly have the president's ear, while Priebus on the outside looking in. Then there's the head of the RNC. Yeah, you name her. Yeah, I'll give you a hint here. It's Ronna Romney McDaniel. We practically had to look her up here. That's how uh, quiet she has been, as has been the RNC. So is the divide growing even more pronounced between D.C. and New York City? And again, 
you've got all these rogue characters from the Steve Bannons and the Millers, and where do they come in on this? Are they helped or hurt by Scaramucci? My first take is when I saw him, he was a fun character, but already it seems to be like, you know, uh, Shecky Green here with a, with a kind of a comedy routine more than party discipline. His idea is let Trump be Trump. Isn't that how we got into trouble for six months? It is. And most people that know Anthony Scaramucci, I've met him several times. He's a nice guy. He loves people. He's a brilliant marketer. He built his financial business mainly on his ability to market himself and his ideas and his conference in Las yep. Vegas every year, which is huge and popular. I don't think anyone thinks he's the, the second coming of Warren Buffett when no. it comes to, <laughs> to finance and investing. The problem that a nice guy like Anthony Scaramucci is going to have is he's built his own reputation on himself, much of the same way Donald Trump has. And at some point, He's going to have to make a decision. Do I throw myself under the bus or do I abandon the boss? Because that time is going to come and it's going to be unfortunate, but in a perverse way, it's going to be interesting to watch because it will happen. You know, Andrew, listen, uh, every time I think I figured out what the people want, but I swear Trump can get graded on the biggest curve. We'll talk about this next segment. Find a person with some substance. I mean, I don't think David Gergen would ever take the job in a million years, but my point is a big, you find one substance person. They talk about actual legislation and what's in it. People be like, oh, wow, they know what they're talking about. I mean, the, the mooch is not going to know when they're trying to come up with a communication strategy, can he keep them off Twitter? I mean, basically, that's what we're talking about. Not in a strategic agenda, not in terms of messaging to say why it will help people and whatever else. I don't get that they've learned any lessons about what's gone wrong in the first six it, months. You're right, it doesn't particularly work well on a PR standpoint in terms of communicating a message and keeping the president on a message. There's another problem too, which is they keep losing institutional knowledge. I mean, everybody thinks that Scaramouche is gonna wind up taking over for Reince Priebus and be the chief of staff. That's one more person in a position of power who doesn't know how operational Washington works and how you actually deal with Congress to get stuff through or how you effectively run the executive so that you don't have mistakes like you had when the first travel ban went out and nobody was on the same page and you had chaos at the airport. Institutional knowledge are, means people that know how to run Washington. The Trump clan doesn't like those people because A, they tell Trump that he's wrong and B, they tell him not to do what he wants to do, and he wants to be able to do yep. whatever it is that he wants to do. But it makes him less effective, and that causes more problems. And you know what's funny? We were talking earlier today before the show. Scaramucci has a well-deserved reputation for leaking to the press here. People would keep him out of certain loops because they didn't want stuff getting out. Now think about that, and think about that apparently Bannon can't stand him, right? And look what we've already seen in the first six months with the warring factions and with an absentee landlord in terms of the president preaching message discipline. It's going to be a mess here, Dominic, let, let alone with an ongoing investigation. Let me make a prediction here, and this is just one person's prediction. This man here on the screen is a walking scandal waiting to happen, and it's going to occur very, very soon. I guarantee you there's something in his background. He's too slick. He's too pretty. He's too articulate. It's not, the president, this is the last thing that the president needs. But to your point, in terms of him being like Trump, translation, the way I interpreted what you just said, fake your way to the top. That's what he's done. He's hey, been successful. He's been very successful. And but, he's got, but still, the trauma fake your way to yeah. the top. And by the way, there's a real division from a messaging standpoint between what Huckabee Sanders is delivering, which is a very sardonic, very like us against you and the media and him talking about loving the president literally I think it was 13 times in there and him making his three foot putts and swishing free throws so it'll be fascinating how it plays out I can't wait till SNL is back really in there in production did that really happen? oh yeah he, 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 threw, he, threw a, he threw a spiral through no, no, a no, I don't know tire he did, he no I know he yeah. said it I yeah. want to know if it really oh, happened I, I, I said he could make a three foot putt I mean Stevie Wonder could make a three foot putt <laughs> wow <laughs> that was a little tough <laughs> okay coming up next as we know Trump does not hold back, and he doesn't back up. Now imagine, just for a moment, we're going to let you think about an alternative universe, uh, whether it's our friends here, old boss, or even the last president. Imagine if they said and tweeted half the things Trump did, what would be going on in our nation's capital right now? We will uh, play alternative universe after this.